We are live. Welcome to the webinar, everybody. For those of you guys who are joining, open up your chat. Let us know where you're calling in from and how many deals you guys have done. I can't wait to see where all you guys are calling in from. And tonight with us, we've got Dedrick and Crystal Polite. And it's been uh, almost a year, I think, since we had you guys on. We had you on most recently in 2020. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, I believe that is it. That's awesome. So um, for those of you guys who have uh, seen them, uh, you know their background story, but for those of you that haven't, we're gonna get into it in just a second. Um, so we've got uh, a lot of people chiming in in the chat now. Let's see here, Janice from Gainesville, Mario for, from uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Ash girl. Uh, yes, at, yep. Uh, Hickory, Hello. North Carolina, Atlanta. Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, Juan, hope your water is back in Dallas. Uh, James, Salt Lake City. Tamika in Houston. Atlanta, California. Detroit, Yuma, Raleigh. Uh, wow. All right. So you guys are all over the country, which I love. And Dedrick and Crystal, where are you calling in from tonight? Are you guys at home? Yes, so we are in North Carolina. We're in the Greensboro, North Carolina area. Well, we're actually originally from Boston, Massachusetts. We've got Zachary from Massachusetts just uh, most recently typed in the chat there. So you've got some people that are familiar okay. with that. Nigeria. Okay. okay, Constance from Boston. <laughs> got people international, okay. There's somebody from an international place? Or is yeah, that- someone from Nigeria. Wow. Mm -hmm. So cool. Cambridge native. Okay, Chris. Oh, Constance replied with a purple heart for Boston. So <laughs> Dead, Crystal, why don't you guys give us a little bit of background about how'd you move from Boston to Greensboro, North Carolina, and how'd you guys go into real estate? So I got knocked up. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Dave, Dave almost spit his drink out. Like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard that version of the story. <laughs> we got pregnant. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's how we, um, uh, somebody asked, are you recording this, Dave? Of course. Um, yeah. So we, I, we ended up getting pregnant and I'm originally from North Carolina, but I grew up and was raised in Boston since I was a little girl. So um, I didn't want to raise my children there. So I told him, I said, listen, uh, he's originally from South Carolina. Um, and I said, listen, my mom had just retired, moved back. I said, hey, I want to move closer to my mom. So um, he was like, okay. I said, so I'm going to North Carolina. He was like, well, I'm going too. <laughs> so you ain't leaving me in Boston. <laughs> But we both grew up in Boston. I grew up in Roxbury, um, in the inner city in Boston. So, but again, we both had Southern roots and we knew we didn't want to raise a family up in Boston. We both went to college up there, did the whole thing, working two or three jobs in the rat race. And uh, we really liked the South because it's a lot slower pace um, and there's a, there's a lot of opportunity. So yeah, we're in North Carolina, but again, Deal Machine has allowed us to invest all over the country. So we got deal finders all over the country and we've done deals in multiple states. And you guys have been driving for dollars virtually with deal finders on the ground all over the U.S. for, I think, three years now. Is that right? Since yeah, the, 2018. Since the day I signed up for Deal Machine. Which yeah. Spring of 2018. <laughs> because I was literally like, uh, I remember when we first started with uh, Deal Machine, I used to be all in um, customer service and little chat asking for support cases. Support <laughs> they got to know me real Somebody well. Somebody help me. I can't figure it out. But no, it was, was more amazing. so like, hey, are you going to be getting this any soon? Any soon enough? And hey, uh, can I get deal finders a la carte? Because I wanted to, I wanted deal finders, but I didn't want to upgrade. <clears throat> and I remember Dave is the one who answered that question for me. He was like, well, we do have a, a enterprise level. <clears throat> <laughs> And right. I was like, I don't want enterprise. I want deal finders. <laughs> so all the amazing stuff that Deal Machine has now, Crystal was asking for it three years ago. And Deal Machine is literally, you know, started as a driver for dollars app and has built out this amazing platform that does just about everything. 
Oh yeah, I remember you were asking for the ability to bulk upload properties for the longest time. Yep. And it took us a little while to get to it, but um, it's, it's great to see all those requests come through. Because the bulk upload as well as the um pick, pick, the pick, pick street pick oh yeah, my god yeah, I, that's I, that's right. remember we were here in North Carolina when we started but Boston is home for us so everyone's like oh starting your backyard and I kept telling people Boston is our backyard because we've lived there longer than we've lived here we were only in North Carolina but so many years um at the time so I told him I was like we're investing in Boston he was like oh well maybe we should start in North Carolina I said no so that's when, you know, we had started with Deal Machine and I just started adding pictures virtually. Um, so she would literally virtually. like screenshot the computer screen of a picture of the house in order to upload the picture. We're in North Carolina, upload these Boston properties a thousand miles away. She hacked it together and that that's how we landed our one of our biggest deals ever, which kind of put us on the map. A six figure virtual wholesale deal was from a postcard that we sent through Deal Machine. Oh man, I remember that. Wow, that was a lot. So you wanted to be closer with your mom and all the way to you told us everything we needed to build <laughs> and then we built it. <laughs> Pretty much. So when did you guys, uh, did you do any type of real estate before 2018, before you signed up for Deal Machine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I bought my first house in 2007. I bought a triplex in Boston. I was working in corporate America doing pharmaceutical sales. Everybody said, buy a house, buy a house. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was like, I'm going to buy a house. And I, I pretty much did what they call house hacking now, where I lived in a basement garden apartment and I rented out the top two floors that paid the majority of my mortgage. Um, and I still own that house to this day, but that was the first house I bought. But then I didn't do anything for another 10 years. I just read all the books that you see behind me and I would talk to her about, we need to invest in real estate, but I was a, I was more in an analysis paralysis mode. And my wife is more of the, you know, let's do it. Just don't even think, let's just do it. And it, you know, it wasn't until 2017 when we really decided to dive into real estate. Uh, we had bought a franchise. Again, we were still working in corporate America. She had a job, I had a job, but we were trying to figure out a way to escape corporate America where we could be our own boss. So we bought a franchise. We did that on the side for a little bit, but it didn't provide the freedom we were looking for. So in 2017, we sold that franchise and we took all that money and went all in on real estate, investing in real estate, educating ourselves, buying courses, hiring mentors, hiring coaches. And then finally we found, we found Deal Machine. But actually our first real estate venture together was, was Airbnb. Uh, Airbnb. So in 2012, yeah. before anyone knew what Airbnb was. Before the household name. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, we started doing that together we were airbnb in my apartment out got it so in boston you had the first um, rental so that was before the first rental in 2017 yep. and then you did uh, airbnb in 2012 that because that was your apartment yep. that you rented and, out. and then yeah we were yeah. dating two months in you know how you're dating and she was always at my place and her place is just sitting oh. empty collecting dust and i was like oh, there's no way we can make some money <laughs> we can make some money off your apartment. She was like, hey, let's do it. If we can make some money, let's yep. do it. <laughs> I'm very familiar because this last year, as soon as COVID struck, my girlfriend and I were spending all of our time at my house and her apartment was just empty for months and months. And we finally have consolidated. But yeah, there's that time there where it's you still pay for it because it's an early relationship. And right. Uh, right. So might as well get some money out of it. Nope. And he kept saying, oh, move in with me. I was like, there is no ring on this finger. She said, I'm keeping my apartment. Ain't no way you're going <laughs> to get me caught out there like that. Because if you say, oh, it ain't working, go home. And I ain't got to go home, no home to go to. Then I got to set something on fire. <laughs> so I was like, we ain't even going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay. So we've got the timeline fill filling in now. So 2017, first rental, 2012, Airbnb. 2007 was the first rental and then 2012. Oh. My apologies. That makes more sense. Yes. And then was it 2016-ish time frame where you guys had invested a lot into your mentors and in, into marketing and then started uh, along like real estate full time? Yeah. Yep. January 2017, we took one of those three-day seminars. Like, hey, go to the seminar, learn everything you can about real estate and start making millions. Well, of course that didn't happen, but we started fumbling along trying to figure out how to do our first flip, how to do our first wholesale deal. The problem was we didn't have enough cash to do a flip. 
So we were like, okay, well, we need to figure out wholesaling so we can build up some cash. Uh, it took us a year and a half from January 2017 to August 2018 to close our first deal. Um, and again, a big part of that was finally finding deal, deal machine, which got the phone ringing, right? And that's how we started closing deals. Got it. So for those of uh, us that are on the webinar that have been trying for a month and are about to give up, would you say maybe uh, hang on for a little bit longer? Listen, don't quit. It took us a year and a half, 20 right. months to be exact. And we wanted to quit so many times. So I know people like, you know, you've been struggling at it two or three months and you're getting turned down, you're getting rejection. Do not quit. If we would quit, you know, right. I don't know where we'd be right now, but we'd still be working jobs and miserable <laughs> probably where we'd be. Right. Um, but yeah, d just don't, don't quit. We had invested so much time, so much money, blood, sweat, energy. We were like, we kind of burned the ships. We were like, this has to work because we have too much invested. We're not turning back. And when you have that mentality where it's like, I can't go back to what I was doing, you know, that's, that's when you get that breakthrough. And um, a lot of the reasons we, I, I like to also let people know is throughout that time period where we hadn't closed the deal, <clears throat> we were educating ourselves. So we were continuously going to conferences. We were in masterminds. Um, Flying across the country to go, you know, meet experts <clears throat> and learn their techniques. What are they doing to find deals? Absolutely. And just <clears throat> drilling down our specific niches um, with cold calling, driving for dollars. Like we literally were going to experts who were doing this and not people who call themselves experts, but people who, could, who could really show us on paper, like, Hey, listen, this is what I'm doing. Um, this is what I'm making. This is how I'm doing it. Um, because what that enabled us to do is shorten our learning curve. So by the time I found deal machine, um, and we had literally tried everything, uh, cold calling, cold calling bandit, signs, bandit signs, bandit sign on wheels, car signs, um, <laughs> uh, you name it, even driving for dollars, but we were using paper and pen at that time. So of course, none of those leads got called back. Um, we were doing everything. So th throughout that time period, and I would also say we had a franchise, we both had jobs that was making really good money. You get to that point where you're comfortable too. And I tell people, look at that also in that time period and ask yourself like, you know, am I, am I comfortable? Am I really pushing it? Because we went full steam. I quit my job June 8th and 2018. And I literally within two weeks, because I said, give me one week off. I didn't really take it off, but I said, give me one week and then I'm hopping back in. Well, by that second week, we had had three contracts for the first time. Uh, three contacts in a row. They were all from Deal Machine. Um, but at that point, it was was just like, you know, sink or swim. And we went like full steam ahead. And it wasn't until then that I realized that we were kind of comfortable being. But what have we done three months prior to that? You had started ramping up. Oh, absolutely. April, May, June, starting to send out three, 400 mails Heavy. a month. So that's when four months later, we started seeing the fruits of that. I thought one really important part of that was you talked to a lot of people that were actually successful doing it. And that's what yep. helped you become successful faster. And we didn't just talk to them. We literally paid them like, hey, teach us your methods of how you're getting these deals. And they would yep. teach us their, you know, their secrets. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that, and for you, it took a year and a half. For me, it honestly took about the same. And I'm sure for a lot of people, it takes time to get that first deal. What is it that does take so long to like, learn everything you need to learn to actually get that deal locked down and closed. And can, can that time be shortened? Yes. And how I would say for it to be shortened is educating yourself really on the business. That's how you're going to shorten your learning curve. Um, because for us, we were trying. And we had a and few we close had calls. Quite a few, we had numerous uh, contract properties under contract. contract. And they would fall through at the last minute. Something Absolutely. would happen. And it was always something that we look back on it and be like, okay, now we know never to do that again. Or, you know, okay. We made all the mistakes. All the mistakes. <laughs> but by really um, getting with experts, mentors, coaches, we learned stuff um, that would have taken us maybe another year 
to figure out just by trying to piece stuff together with YouTube University and going to conferences and stuff like that. You you just piece stuff together. Yeah, YouTube is only going to get you so far. You can learn right. a lot of great information on there, but it's only going to get you so far. Absolutely. Um, the one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching is kind of what takes it over the top. So we were lucky enough to find coaches and mentors that we could pick up the phone and call and say, hey, listen, this happened, that happened. What do I do to make sure this deal closes? Yeah. Yeah. So educating yourself, uh, if you have the ability to have a coach, that's a way to help. But also I heard in there was the sooner you can take action, the sooner you can learn from your own experiences. And that really is great. Make those mistakes. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, we're about 15 minutes in. We've got some great questions in the chat. I would love for Hannah to start bringing some people on if you guys are ready for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, we can start into the Q&A part, guys. So if you've asked a question, we're actually going to be bringing people on live. Um, so you get to talk with the flights. I know somebody just said they see you guys on YouTube all the time. So it's weird to see you live. <laughs> uh, but you can actually talk to them live as well. Um, it looks like we've got somebody joining now, uh, Brian. Brian, are you there? Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, Good Brian. Brian. Hey, good to see you again. Big numbers. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, it's great seeing you guys. Uh, uh, I, one of the one of the first uh, deal machine videos that I saw was actually you guys, and since then, like my wife Michelle and I have kind of been like there where we're going, you know. So anyway, it's been it's been neat, uh, you know, over the last year, like watching you guys and your business evolve and grow. I, I just I think it's awesome. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think you guys live right down the road, so maybe one of these days we'll have to try to buy you dinner. You know what I mean? Where, where are you at? Uh, we're in Asheboro, North Carolina. Okay. Oh, okay. We were yeah. just there. That's where the zoo yeah. is, right? Asheboro Zoo? Uh, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, we can hear the lions uh, at certain times of night. Uh, I mean, we're literally like right next to the zoo. It's great. Yeah, we take oh, our yeah. kids there every summer. Fantastic. Well, we got oh, 10 God. acres over here. Let's, let's play some time. We'll, we'll get up. Yeah, that sounds great, Crystal. That'd be, that really would be wonderful. Um, yeah, uh, Elise Michelle said to say hi. She's uh, off doing some uh, some girly things right now. Hi, tell her I said hi. You guys, um, actually, um, Crystal and Dedrick, I tell, I'm like, you guys are going to be the co-preneurs that like the flights are, they're, they're really speeding ahead. So go ahead, Brian. I love that you guys are going to connect. That makes my heart so happy. Yeah, yeah, me too. Absolutely. So um, you kind of, uh, you kind of sort of answered my question indirectly with just, uh, sort of the way that, that, uh, that David had the conversation going, but, um, what I kind of wanted to know was at what point did you guys decide that, all right, it's time for us to scale. It's time for us to increase our systems. Um, and it's time for us to, uh, you know, to, to put some more money into and to make more money early but, on. Yep. So it would have definitely been, um, I would say after we had close our third deal um i mean before that we were investing we had spent over a hundred thousand in just education um but not all at once but yeah over different. the course of that year yeah um but i would say as far as um really saying hey listen okay this is what it let's scale this it was really when we found deal machine because we had cold callers going and we had hired a company to do our cold calling for us. So they were actually cold calling when I found Deal Machine. And then I found Deal Machine and we saw that it was working like so well. I, we canceled the cold callers and we poured more money into Deal Machine. Yeah. yeah. And literally that's, <clears throat> that's when I upgraded to Enterprise. Like I was... That said, against spending that extra because, like hundred dollars. Yeah, we were spending about <clears throat> fifteen hundred to two thousand a month in cold calling, right? Yep. Hiring outsourced cold calling to generate seller leads for us, and it just wasn't working. We weren't getting the contracts and deals, so we're like, why don't we take that money and put it into Deal Machine and let's see what happens, right? Absolutely. We, you know, we started like two or three hundred dollars a month sending out mailers through Deal Machine, and then once we saw a few deals come in, we made a few thousand dollars. We're like, okay, let's put more into marketing. We realized the more money we spent on marketing the more money would come back in contracts and deals. And it's just an engine that you can keep feeding. Absolutely. Recycle the, the, the machine, so to speak. So yeah. Yeah. Um, if, if I got like five more seconds here. Um, so we're kind of at this point in our business where like we know it's time to shift gears. You know, we were very blessed in that um, 
we ended up on a phone call just driving down the road with Josh Johnson one day. So Deal Machine was the start for us. Um, you know, and by God, it's going to be the machine to get us where we need to go because it, it's awesome. I got, I got no complaints. Um, but we're finding that at this point, like uh, the wholesale deals are coming. That's great. Um, we've got to make a decision as to when we need to start hanging on to properties. So we're about to do our first like actual flip. Uh, so that'll be going on in a couple of weeks. So that's super exciting, you know? Um, and we got some really good wholesale offers on it, but I'm like, babe, like, man, there's just, there's a lot of money on the table here. Let's, let's keep more of it, you know? Um, but we've got, we kind of snuck into a new area um, and it looks like we've got like, uh, like 10 to 20 properties that we might be buying all in the same area at about the same time. And so my question is this, is like, how do I know that I'm ready to keep all of those and to like burr all of those properties? So um, are you buying like a package from one seller or was it different sellers? It's from about four different sellers, but two of them are packages where there's like six or eight properties mixed up in there. Okay. So we could wholesale the whole thing, but I, that residual income looks really nice right now. Do you have any yeah. rental properties or have you been a landlord before? Uh, I have, but it has been some time uh, being active duty Navy, like, you know, moved around. And so I haven't, I haven't like legitimately owned rental properties in, in, in a while. Okay. And again, it doesn't matter if you've owned rentals or not. I mean, you know, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, but I would say, I would say go for it. Um, the only reason we wholesale is to get the cash to buy more buying holes. That's it. That's the only reason. That's, that's the answer right there. That's it. Yeah. Wholesale to buy and hold. That is our, that is our model. That's our strategy. Wholesaling is a job. Flip is a job. You can make a lot of money. You can do very well wholesaling mm -hmm. and properties, but our retirement and the freedom comes from the cash flow from, from rental properties. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. It was wonderful to like actually connect with you guys. Uh, David, Elise, Hannah, thank you so much for, uh, for Brian, letting me know. Reach out to me. us on um, social media. Reach out okay. to me. I can, we can link up. All right, Crystal, it sounds great, man. You're welcome. We'll meet you guys in person. Thanks, Brian. All right, bye, guys. So much, Brian. All right, later, dude. It's funny that Brian said he started out by talking with Josh Johnson because I think that you guys reached out to us via chat and it turned out Josh from our team was living within 20 minutes from you guys, right? So yeah. you actually met up at a, like Panera Bread Company from what yeah, I remember. Josh was in Raleigh. We met up with him at a Starbucks or Panera Bread and he, he broke down the enterprise plan yep. and sold us on it. And we were like, hey, we're all in. Yep. And then we <laughs> kept meeting with him. And he did the whole thing wearing flip-flops, I bet. Yep, he sure did. It was winter time <laughs> and he had shorts and flip-flops on. <laughs> yeah, I love Josh. <laughs> Me too. I absolutely love him. All right, it looks like we've got Keon. Uh, Keon, can you hear me? I can. How you doing? How's it going, Keon? Hey, Keon. Good. Hold on, let me start my video real quick. All right. Perfect. Get a mess in the background. All right. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Doing great. Good. So I, I've followed you guys a lot on uh, YouTube. So I'm very excited to talk to you guys in live person. So. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Um, I know you guys have a family and I have a family of seven, have five kids. Uh, everyone is, you know, under a teenager. So, you know, two, four, six, eight, twelve, 12, you know, married, even had a dog. So I'm just trying to understand how you guys sort of manage your time. That's sort of one of my questions. And then the other part was because I have such a large family and a large responsibilities, how do you manage the amount of marketing spend and budget spend that you do to try to get these deals? That's a great question. Well, first of all, God bless you. Five kids and a dog. You got a basketball <laughs> team. You got, we think we have our hands full with two kids. We got right. two boys who are very active. They'll probably come banging on this door in a few minutes. But uh, it, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you saying juggling, being married and having kids and trying to build a business is not tough. It, it is tough. You want to talk about right. the time management aspect? So as far as time management, one of the things that, um, and you're married, right? I am married. And I did uh, forget to mention, I do have a full-time job that oh. is a very, I'm a, I'm a director of a large school district. So it's very time consuming and intensive. So I try to okay. manage all of that. 
So is your wife in the business with you? She is not. Okay. Um, is she currently working? Right now, she's sort of doing the stay at home, uh, the, the, the distance learning thing. Oh, okay. It's really, really taking a big toll as well. Oh, listen, trust me, I knew. <laughs> I almost got divorced over that. Um, <laughs> she just heard you in the background the last. <laughs> from him and the kids. I ain't even want kids no more. Homeschool is no joke. Um, what I would definitely say is one of the things that helped us with time, man with, with, uh, time management is um, offloading, so to speak, some of the things that um, yeah, outsourcing, outsourcing a lot of stuff that we didn't really um, want to do at that point. So if you are starting off, I would say with, you know, wholesaling, things of that nature, stuff that is not income producing for you, I would find a VA um, to start yeah. handling some of those things. One of the things is also break your time down for the time that you do have available. Because remember when we started, we also both had full-time jobs when we first started and we were running a, um, a franchise in two different States. Um, so one of the things that we had to do is we had to take our time and break it down so that every moment made sense to us. So a lot of our driving for dollars. So like, even after I would say, after we would get off of work, I knew I had to go pick up my son from school. That was driving for dollars for me. So instead of me leaving, if he got off at two 30, um, and I went to go pick him up, I would make sure I left to get him, but that time was also used for me to go a different route maybe and look at houses um, as I'm going to get them, look at houses as I'm coming back, adding them to deal machine. Our weekends were heavy with driving for dollars. Um, I One thing I did was I made a um, number. I got a number in my head broken down basically based on how many properties we needed to get into this um, app every single week in order for us to get enough postcards going mm -hmm. um and i broke that down over the course of seven days um yeah, we would tag team it too we're, yep. we're both in the car you know i'm driving and she's on deal machine and she's like slow down slow down this is when we first started using the app i'm like what she's like i need to get this app this, this house in the deal machine i'm like what is deal machine what are you doing i didn't even know what uh -huh. she was doing when yep. she first got started so then we got it became a routine that anytime we see a rundown or beat up looking house we pull over, she snaps the picture, it's in deal machine. We hit start mailers and we're on to the next one. One of the things that we do do even now, um, when we go driving for dollars, which is every day for us, we don't go it's drive just, for dollars. It's just part of our daily routine. It really is. We don't look at it like, hey, let's set aside some time. Now it is no matter where we go, we're gonna drive for dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. but one of the things, if we're together, so this is great for you and your wife. Um, because if you have the app, you have the ability to have deal finders on it, right? So yeah. when we first started, my husband was a deal finder as well. Um, but he would have the app open. I have the app open. As we're driving, if I see a property and I'm like, oh, that's a good one. While he's taking a picture, I'm adding the property. Uh -huh. You get what I'm saying? So then he airdrops the picture to me or vice versa. So that's how we're able to keep going. Um, if we're out and we're actually looking, if we miss it, then I got street pick mm -hmm. to me is like literally the best feature in the world. That one in mm -hmm. the ability to be able to, um, now filter to see the houses around when we're, um, driving for dollars, but that's how we actually work together a lot. Um, so one thing is find out how many properties you need to get into deal machine. Okay. And if that is 300 a week, break that down over the course of seven days then say, hey, listen, I need to get 25 properties every single day, right? Find that time, because it's real. I'm telling you, the way Deal Machine is set up now, you can get 25 properties sitting right where you're sitting right now. Yeah. So like today, I literally entered 15 properties and I didn't leave my house, but I saw a house that I liked um, in an area and I, I did find one property. And then I said, oh, you know what? Let me go around this neighborhood and look and see what all other houses are around the so neighborhood. You scan the neighborhood right from your phone. Right from my phone. Not and I just the added them all. And then I hit street pick for you, every single you do, one. Tap to add. Yep. Tap to add. Uh -huh. um, they were in an area I wanted. So I just tap to add them. And then I just 
um, added them from my phone. So if you know you don't have enough time to actually get out and drive from do for dollars, do it in the comfort of your home. Make sure you have street pick and literally just find a neighborhood, you know, your, um, your farm area and yeah. say, Hey, this is the area I want. And then just start going through that farm area on your phone and start adding these pictures and then street pick them all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Yeah. What's your dog's name? <laughs> Ryder. <laughs> Riot? Ryder. Oh, Ryder. Ryder. Okay. Ryder. <laughs> And Keon, bless you for being in public education. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and make sure you get that wife involved. I'm trying. Oh, she's, she's right there. She's right there. Right there. Yes, now, now she's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> There's no camera time for her tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Keon. Thank and you. Thanks, Keon. Hey, Mario. Hello, hello, everyone. What's up, Mario? Thank you for hosting. Uh, look, we were super excited and looking forward to the polites being on here. Uh, haven't found you or followed you just yet, but I will now. Um, thank you for Deal Machine. Myself, uh, just a real quick background. My wife, Alyssa, and I, we um, <coughs> shifted uh, beginning of COVID from uh, having a janitorial business um, into real estate. So luckily I jumped in to uh, being a disposition manager for a company. There were systems, processes in place, but uh, went on, my, on our own uh, here in November and uh, just finally closed one, our first deal. Congrats, <laughs> uh, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And uh, yeah, it was a farm, ranch, uh, a lot of equity, so very excited for that. Uh, but now we're looking to scale. I'll ring the bell for you. You close ding, your ding, ding. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you. And now um, our biggest thing is I have uh, established a great network of buyers and investors, not only in Colorado, but also in uh, Pennsylvania. So outside of Philadelphia, so Reading, um, a lot of areas there. And then um, have some uh, friends down in South Carolina, actually, um, and Charlottesville. So wanted to get some feedback from you, uh, the polites, in regards to scaling out and kind of treating your uh, driving for dollar, I like to call them bird dogs. Um, how do you train them, get them going, and also continue um, recruiting in different areas? I mean, I would say, uh, Mario, always be recruiting. So it's the type of thing where, you know, even if you have three deal finders and they're all excited, um, you know, it's not really a high paying position up front, right? So you got to keep recruiting more because you got to assume those three people are going to drop off next week. Yep. So we had the mentality, let's constantly be talking about deal finding, recruiting. Hey, do you want to make some extra money? Great. This, listen, this all you have to do is very simple. When you see a rundown, beat up property in your area, all I need you to do, don't text me, right? Because you know how your mother, your aunt will say, I saw a house down the street, you should buy it. And they'll text it to you, don't text it to me. Yep. Pull out your phone, snap a picture, right? Assuming they're already a deal finder and just send it through my app. That way, when I send them a mailer, I close a deal, I'll give you a percentage. How's 10% of $10,000, right? Yeah, I'll make a thousand bucks, sure. So that's literally, we would be saying that to 20 people every single day. Everyone we run across, we say, hey, you looking to make some extra money? We're flipping houses now. Here's how you can help us out. So literally keep, always be recruiting deal finders because again, you got to assume 90% of them are going to drop off. So you got to keep filling that pipeline with more deal finders. I would also say, uh, make sure you start with friends and family, right? Because um, my best uh, deal finder till this day is, is my mother. <laughs> and what made her so great was she was, re she's retired. Right. And, you know, when you get retired people, you know, um, they're on a fixed income. They got a lot of time on their hands. And a lot of time on their hands. And they want to be useful. So my mother actually loves getting out there driving for dollars to the point where she even now <laughs> I get annoyed because every conversation, did you get that house I sent y'all? Every time app? I see my mother-in-law, she's like, baby, I got another three properties for you. Right, like, and, but she knows that we've closed so many deals and we've given her so many checks of that 10%. Right. 
she's putting us to work. She's like, all I gotta do is send you properties and I get a check when you close it. And it is every <laughs> conversation is, did you get that house I sent you? Did they call you back? Or did, listen, you need to get a hold of them because I know that property is vacant. Like that's the conversation. And from that, she went and recruited all my aunts and uncles. Oh, she recruited a lot of family members. Who are all retired and they all want something to do. So I always tell people to um, not look for so much a college kid, right? Um, or someone that you know you're going to be doing a lot of turnover with. Look for people friends who, yeah. friends and family, who um, really want to help you out, but also have the time um, where time is not a factor to them, so to speak. So one of our uh, Bur uh, deal finders right now is a retired postal worker. Yeah, retired mailman. Retired mailman. And he is phenomenal. Like, I mean, phenomenal with finding these properties. But he's retired and that's, he, he just absolutely loves it. It gives him something to do. And every single property that he's finding that he's putting into the app, um, what people don't understand is the great thing about Deal Machine is every property that we have, in deal machine we own that list now so these these properties are continuous mailers non-stop until somebody say hey take me off my list um but we also cold call these properties so this is our list and we're gonna we keep also text them we text we this the same list so we keep it in a funnel this same list because th this list is more powerful than any list that you're going to um, buy. to buy or pull yourself. So I wouldn't worry about scaling so much as to just scaling your marketing, right? Because um, if you and your wife can do it together right now, um, I think for Dedrick and I, we, it was just us for the longest and except the VA. We yes. literally, our first hire was a virtual assistant. Um, and that was to handle all the admin tasks and things of that nature. Um, but I would say, keep it between you guys for right now. Make sure you have clearly defined roles so that both of you guys are not working on the same stuff. Um, you have a completely different part of the business. Your wife has another completely um, different part of your business. So that way, when you are ready to scale and bring someone else in, it's someone who's going to complement what you guys are already doing. It's someone who can bring something to the table and you'll know what part of the business that is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Phenomenal advice from a power couple. We could tell uh, you've been through it and uh, it's, yeah, we have four boys recently married, so we understand <laughs> we have to uh, build this empire. This hey boy, uh, how old are they? Oh my gosh. 13, 11, six, and four. Oh, wow. And we, yeah. have, we live on a ranch. So we have a horse, we have goats, we have chickens, we have three dogs. So they got a lot of open space to run and be boys. That's good. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And what you need to start doing is with the kids, when you go out, make it a part of the family routine, because that's what we do. So, like our yeah. boys now, everywhere we go, Oh, mommy, there goes some vacant land because we also are big with buying land, buying houses. Make they, it a game for them. They literally, and I'll tell them, I say, hey, listen, whoever can find us the most rundown houses, for every rundown house, we'll give you a Skittle or we'll <laughs> give you some well, they'll, candy. They'll do anything for candy. It's over. It's <laughs> over. Mine will too. <laughs> literally. So that's what got them so heavily involved to the point where like right now, our oldest is seven. And no matter where I'm taking him, I could be completely thinking about something else and he'll be like, oh, mommy, look, look, wait, 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 turn around, turn around. Let's go back and get this house. Because it's, in, it. it's engraved in him, like literally. And I, he's even told me, pull the app out, mommy, pull the app out. Here, you're driving, I'll get the picture. <laughs> How cute. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys. Stay oh, you're welcome. you're welcome. Thanks, Mario. It's great to hear from you. And also you guys don't look old enough to have 13 year old. Just saying. Right. right. I know. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good gene. <laughs> Hi, Juan. Juan, can you hear us? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Okay, can you hear me? We sure can. What's up, Juan? Where are you okay. 
I'm calling from Dallas Fort Worth. Awesome. DFW. How's yes. everything uh, settled out down there with the weather? It's it's getting better. Um, yeah, it was just like it was crazy. It was uh, negative uh, one and one week, and then uh, eighty two about a week ago. <laughs> so. Okay. So it's kind of crazy, but as far as um, Deal Machine, this is kind of my first time using y'all's app. Um, I haven't really like signed up. I just actually found y'all through a different. Um, oh my god, I can't, I can't, I can't remember who the the people were that kind of referred me to y'all. Um, but yeah, basically, I'm just I I just get I'm just getting started on all this, so I'm kind of just listening to to how everything is going right now. Great. What are some things that stuck out to you that you heard so far? Well, I'm um, I'm really liking the uh, uh, the picture where you can take a picture of the of the property and y'all sell uh, send out. Uh, postcards and stuff like that that's very interesting um it seems like y'all pretty much got all y'all t's crossed out i'm kind of super excited to to get on board with this app because i do a lot of um uh, of driving around and stuff like that just for work yeah and i fly here i mean i'm here most of the time but I also fly out to puerto rico Ooh. so um, if this works here, I mean, I'm super pumped to go to Puerto Rico and see if I can land some properties there also with this app. Juan, listen, this, this thing works. The reason we drive for dollars so much is imagine if every house you put into deal machines would you got to check for $10,000. That's how I look at every house. Cause I'm like, okay, I can wholesale this and make about 10 grand. So that's why it's worth my while to every house that I see that might have a little distress going on with it. I'm going to enter it in a deal machine. So just have that mentality that every house is a potential $10,000 payday for you. Okay. How, let me ask you this. How long does it take for y'all to uh, wrap up a deal? So how long does it take? It really depends, right? There's no deal that is like the other. We've closed deals that we've gotten under contract. We've closed them with as soon as like 10 days. Some deals have taken 10 months right. because there were issues with the title or liens on it, whatever. So it really depends. The goal is of course to close the deal as quickly as possible. But I say our, our average deal would close within 30 to 45 days from getting okay. a contract to actually closing on it. Okay. And that's also gonna be different depending on where you live. So like he said, where we're at, we get a ton of probate. Um, a, a majority of our properties are probate. So we're running into a ton of title issues and but stuff. But those are also very profitable. But those are the profitable ones too also, right. And you were saying y'all y'all had some, um, y'all made some, you know, some mistakes and stuff. What would you suggest to somebody starting off? What would you, what would you say, uh, to avoid like uh, this is probably something that it's going to give you a headache uh, for me i would say avoid um too many different marketing methods at, at one time pick one pick <laughs> one and master it first yeah so for us we tried cold calling it didn't work at, for, that, time. at that time right uh -huh. so then i found deal machine and it worked and that's all we we focused, on. focused okay. on at that for at least the next year. That was our main focus was deal machine, deal machine, deal machine. And we had closed so many deals with that. Then I said, okay, now let's add, on let's some other add another method on to deal machine. And, um, but with even doing that, I kept those same lists. So someone in the chat, I saw asked, how long do you keep a list? Nadia forever. Like I'm literally still hitting my very first deal machine list from four years from ago. From four years ago. It's like if they haven't sold us the house, we're gonna keep marketing to a, them until they say, "Don't ever mail to me. Don't ever call me again." Absolutely. Otherwise, we're gonna keep pinging them to see if the timing's right for them to sell. And just so you know how uh, important that is, 
my same deal machine list, I export it out of deal machine. Out of deal machine. And then I started cold calling on it. Um, and from that same list that has been going for some of them for like four years has been on mail. We still squeezed out another 112 leads from the same oh, wow. list from four years, for four years that I, we've been hitting. Um, and still 112. So a lot of it is timing, yep. right? Sometimes you'll hit a seller mm -hmm. and the timing just isn't right. They're not ready to sell. But a year later, something may have happened. They may have gotten divorced. They may have gotten laid off. COVID happened. Now they need to sell. So a lot of people give up between those 12 months. They'll be in the business, out the business. You want to be that person that's still knocking at the door saying, hey, whenever you're ready to sell, I'm ready to buy the house. That's why that okay. feature with Deal Machine where you're now able to cold call or call the prospect is game changer. And text. Yeah. Because every lead that we enter into Deal Machine, even like right now, we cold call it. It's literally, it's we hit submit and then we skip trace it. Okay. Now, a lot of times while we're in front of the property or if it's one that one of our deal finders have um, uploaded, <clears throat> then we'll have our VA, we'll skip trace it. And then we cold call them while the mailers are still going out. We don't ever turn mailers off. And I tell people don't do it waiting, trying to see if you get a hold of someone because they, that postcard may reach them before your voicemail do. So automatically hit submit on those postcards and then try and reach them cold calling. If you can't get them cold calling, well, you know you have postcards going out. Okay. Um, my last question is, did y'all start, you said you started uh, about 2018. Uh, somebody that's getting started like me, is that something, I know they have like, like a basic and then the enterprise. Is that something that y'all would suggest starting all the way or would y'all, you know, do the basics, see how it runs and, and, and go from there? Absolutely. Yeah, I would start with the basic plan. I think it's like 49 bucks a month. Start with that. Mm -hmm. Once you, when you close your first deal, now you got you know, five, 10 grand to put, invest back into your business, move up to professional. Right. And then once you close another couple deals, then you can move up to enterprise. Right. But use the deals that money you make to fund the further marketing efforts in your business. Yeah. But don't go up to enterprise. And I tell people this all the time. Don't go up to enterprise because the name is cool. Go up to enterprise when you have enough deal finders to sustain and for it to make sense to go up to enterprise. Like I told you, I literally held off from getting going up to enterprise until Dave would not budge. Yeah me getting all of our <laughs> okay yeah like, i knew it wasn't happening and he just literally i was like all right i'll meet with josh <laughs> to go yeah. up because i knew we had already closed so many deals at this point and i was like oh i need more people on the road like when it hurts you that's when you go up to enterprise because it was it was hurting us not to have more people on the road driving because i took my husband off as a deal finder, I was like, listen, if you go one day she fired me as a deal finder. without uploading a property, you're no you're help not to uploading me. uploading enough properties. Exactly. Yeah. So I literally took him off and he found out how because he went to use the app and he didn't well, have a login. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you guys. This is very helpful. Oh, uh, last question real quick. Uh, do y'all do... Uh, how y'all getting y'all's finance? Y'all y'all doing like the Burr method or y'all how y'all how y'all getting y'all's financing or how y'all started with like buying properties to flip or buy and hold yeah like how did y'all start so how we started is again we both had jobs i was doing software sales she was a manager for a, a real estate appraisal company so we okay. were making money wholesaling and again we would take a portion of that profits and we would say okay we want to buy a rental property and the good thing about having a job or w-2 income or salary is that banks look at you favorably. It's yeah. actually easier to get a bank loan for a property when you have a job versus if you're an entrepreneur. So we would go to the bank and say, hey, we want to buy this house. It's worth 150. We found it off market. We're buying it for 80,000. So we're getting it at a discount. They would say, okay, well, give us 20% down and we'll give you a loan, right? And we both had good credit. So we would get a bank loan. And that's how we built up a lot of our portfolio early is when we still had jobs is buying properties through bank financing. 
now okay. that we both quit our jobs, we're both full-time entrepreneurs. Now we use other forms of finance and we'll either pay cash or we'll use hard money lenders or private money um, lenders to fund some of those deals. We do a lot with uh, private money lenders, but for you guys who still have your W-2s, don't be so quick to give them up. Make sure you have an exit strategy before you do yeah. um, and try and use that, <clears throat> that W-2 job to acquire as many rentals as possible. Uh, if that yeah. is your end goal, which it should be, nobody's end goal should be to wholesale to their 50 years, 60 years old. Um, it really should be to get into this business to really buy and hold and take down these properties. So um, use that leverage, leverage it to take down as many properties as possible before you walk away from it. Well, well, yeah, thanks a lot because here, hopefully here in the next couple of years, I, I'm talking to y'all, you know, I can say I got 200 properties you know, running out under my belt and there you go. here we go. You can do that's, it, man. That's the goal. That's how you do it, Juan. Well, thank you guys. Thanks yeah. so much, Juan. And I hope you enjoy your next trip to Puerto Rico. Seems like right. place to yep. any time of go, year. Go, going in about eight days. So counting down. Hey, if you find any properties over there too, give us a, a shout because I'm trying to get something for us to buy and hold over there myself. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we will do. And it uh, looks like we've got Joseph coming on. Before we go into Joseph's question, though, I did want to mention that the Polites created a course exactly how they scaled up Deal Machine. Elise has been posting that in the chat to some of you who've been interested. So I just wanted to call attention to that. Um, it's right there, like the fourth chat uh, from the bottom currently, if anyone's interested in learning more about that. And uh, I don't know, Dedrick, Crystal, do you guys have any other uh, info about the course that you'd want to share? Yeah, the course, I mean, basically, like like um, Dave said, it breaks down our whole driving for dollars system, how we scaled it. We've got contracts in there, documents. I mean, it's a ton of valuable information in that course. Another thing that folks get is they get to join our private Facebook group. We have investors from the East Coast to the Midwest, the South, North, all over the country hundreds of investors in there. And it's really a community where we uh, we meet weekly. We do a group question and answer call. Um, so it's a chance to get access to us um, on, a, on a weekly basis. So I definitely recommend it. I always have had a mentor at pretty much every stage. And that's super helpful to be able to jump on a weekly call like that and get like real life advice to your actual situation. So I'm really glad you guys incorporate that in your course. Yeah. And I mean, we do... We do a little bit of extra too, because I mean, we'll, we went on, uh, go looks. We went to properties for, with, uh, some of the people in the course they've asked. Dedrick has negotiated deals, um, for people that's in the course who are just starting out, um, and get a little nervous. So he'll get on and he'll talk for them. Um, we go to their properties with them, walkthroughs. So we do a little bit of all, a little bit of everything just to make sure that, so our you goal know, is we want to see everybody win. Absolutely. So help countless people close their first deal, scale their business. So it's very rewarding. Well, thanks guys for giving a little more info about that. We've got Joseph on. Joseph, where are you calling in from? What's going on guys? Hey. Um, I'm actually uh, neighbors with the Polites. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, you're in Raleigh. Okay. Oh, okay. We were just in Raleigh just... a couple of days ago. Oh, really? Okay. I get, um, for my job, I get a little close to Greensboro. I think Mebane area is, is the farthest I go, but I, I travel full time around the area. Um, I'm, I'm in uh, industrial sales for repair parts to manufacturing facilities. So that's kind of actually why I, I, um, I'm a huge fan of bigger pockets. I grew up for real estate and they referred me over here to Deal Machine. Uh, just listening to their podcasts and stuff of like that. So I, uh, oh, nice. I kept hearing the name and I was like, you know what? I'm already driving around everywhere. I might as well at least like check this out, see what's yep. going on. Oh. So um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm still in my trial. I just started it probably three, four days ago. Um, and I've added, I did my first run yesterday doing about an hour and a half, just running around. I got about 50 houses I, I plugged in. That's so awesome. um, yeah. Luckily, well, some of those I already had written down. I was doing the whole notepad in the phone kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, it, and I was trying to handwrite letters and it just, it wasn't working out. So, um, so yeah, so far I'm, I'm really enjoying the app. Um, definitely going to move forward outside of the, the trial. But one question I had um, is kind of, I guess, what are your tips for 
you know, I'm trying to test out different postcards. I have about three different ones I've written up and I'm, you know, you know, each one that I'm starting to send, I'm sending those three to different ones, just trying to see what the feedback is. So I kind of, what are y'all's tips for creating a postcard that, you know, might attract people to, to call you guys. Um, and also, um, as I update them, are those postcards being updated automatically to the ones that are already being sent? So is that house going to get the new postcard that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would say, um, sounding as natural as possible, right? So I like to add humor to a lot of our postcards. Um, and we do have a lot that's on campaigns where, you know, every month they'll either get a new postcard that we have in there or every three months. Um, get a different they'll get a different verbiage. postcard. Uh, one of the things is that I've tested that works best for us is we have a female's name on our postcards. Um, we don't use a male's name. Um, Less threatening. Yeah, so probably a little hard for me. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I mean, at one point we had Dedrick's name on when we first started, and my name didn't test well. Nope. They're like Dedrick, who's this? Want to buy my house? <laughs> <laughs> and then I put uh, Mike on there. That didn't test well. So then I put my name on it and our calls blew up from there. So then I took my name off um, because people started Googling me and <laughs> they were able to find me. So I took mine off and I put my uh, assistants on there, Melissa, um, no last name. That worked um, tremendously for us. The postcard that we get the highest return on is the block one. The block template. The block template. Um, and I've tried almost all of them um, and tested them all for maybe about six months, six to eight months. And uh, the block was the one that I, we got the most compliments was on. Is that because of how it was structured or the wording? I think it was one because of how it looks. Um, and then two, you, that's how, um, that one is the one that you can get the most words on um, as well. So, um, but what I would definitely say is, um, and I don't know what all of ours says. We got absentee owners, um, ones, um, vacant yeah. properties. We got everything. We got land, ones for land. So we would try to tailor the template, right? Don't overthink it. Right. But again, if a, if a property is obviously vacant, we would send the one that talks about your house is vacant. It's not making you any money. Are you looking to sell it? Right. If we know it's absentee because it's flagged in deal machine. Like this person does not live there. It's a rental property. We would send something speaking to, Hey, are you tired of dealing with tenants and toilets and headaches with your tenants? You know, yeah. are you looking to sell? So we try to tailor it. But other than that, the most important thing you can write on the card is just send the card, right? I think sometimes we overthink it. Like when I, we were first looking at doing direct mail, I would overanalyze it. Like, okay, what do we say? You know, it has to be perfect. Just, just send the card, let it land in their mailbox. And at some point you're going to hit somebody at the right time. And they're going to call you back and say, I got your postcard. I want to talk about selling my house. Yep. Um, other things that worked well for us is, um, brighter colors. So ours is our, um, our, uh, company colors. Um, but I've tested a cup, a few different colors and it was the brighter ones that people notice, um, always in ours is like a bright blue, but I've also switched it up and used yellow. I've used red and, you know, it just attracts people's eyes to it. Um, I also know someone in our, um, in our, uh, course who puts their face <laughs> on the postcard. So what they do is they take a picture of the house, but it's typically them in front of their house. A selfie. A selfie of them in front of their house. And they get a huge return on that, like huge. So I tell people, hey, if you're not afraid Creative. of putting your face on it, um, she and it's a female and she gets a ton of call backs um from that. Cause they're and they're like, wait, are you you were at my house? <laughs> Um, so you got a wife, got a girlfriend, Joseph, have her do that selfie. <laughs> yeah. So for ones, when COVID hit and things of that nature, one of the postcards I sent is I took the house off and I sent a picture of, which I'm actually running now, um, of a guy pulling his hair out. Um, and it's the one for tired landlords. Um, and it's not a picture of their house, but it's a, literally a picture of a guy who 
is I got two running. One is a guy pulling his hair out, and the other one is a guy who is um, sitting on a toilet and he's just like in the dump, stressed out. like totally stressed out with his head down. Um, and we get a ton of callbacks from them, but it's just something that I wanted to try something different, um, other than just the typical house, just to see the response rate, because right now you got to think of the times that we're in and the ones who are getting affected the hardest are the smaller landlords, um, with the smaller units and who can't afford for a tenant not to pay their rent. Um, so those are the ones that we're getting, like right now, business is booming, um as far as the it, it's a seller's market but also remember like my husband was telling someone today people now know that it's a seller's market so it's also you know that double-edged sword people know like oh hey if i put my house on a market i can get top dollar right now so that's excellent advice i i loved it all thank you you're uh, welcome yeah i'll definitely i'm have to uh commit to my girlfriend to let me put her photo on on some of those posts. Yeah, or at least so. tell her to let to use her name. So yeah. if they call and they say, hey, can I speak to you, Carmen? Oh, well, she's actually um out of the office right now. I'm, I'm her partner, Joseph. How can I help you? Because that's all we did. Like Dedrick would answer the phone at times and he'll be like, oh, well, I'm actually a partner. She's out of the office. How can I help you? He's like, you ain't Melissa. Yeah. I want to talk to Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Thank you yeah, guys awesome. so much. Take it to a nice dinner or a nice trip once you close that deal. That's right. That's right. Then she'll then she'll be hooked. She'll uh she'll be wanting to put her photo or name on all of them. Yep. And if she once you bring her into the business, have her as the one who's answering the phones. So we always yep. have females answering our call our phones now. Um we don't have any men answering. Dedrick doesn't answer. Uh, even our acquisition guys, they don't answer. It's always a female who's the first point of contact, less threatening people tend to open up more when it's a female and all the way up until someone shows up at the property they're thinking it's a female so when she hangs up she said okay well i have you friday at 2 30 we'll be there and hangs up the phone so they think that melissa will be there at 2 30 and then dedrick or one of the guys is going to show up so <laughs> that's great advice thank you guys you're welcome you're welcome and uh, yeah, if you ever get back to Raleigh here pretty soon, let me know. Oh, uh, we're in Raleigh every week. Definitely. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I've uh, I already followed you guys yeah. on on social media and stuff, so I'll, I'll um, reach out to you on there. Yeah, yeah. So if you have any deals, any deals, send them send, send them, them over way. to us. someone else. Asks how do they submit deals to us? Just send it to um, info at politeproperties dot com. Elise, can you put that in the chat for us? Yep, info at politeproperties.com. And just so you guys know too, if you're having a hard time, um, we buy in a lot of cities. So for anyone here who's in Boston as well, definitely shoot your deals over to us um, as well. Um, Pretty much any major city. Any major city. In the US will buy in. We'll buy in. And if you're having trouble finding buyers, also reach out to us because um, we have a, a, a large network. So if we can help you offload a deal, we'll definitely help you. That's really good because I hear a lot of people asking, how do I sell my deal once they find it? So working with somebody like you guys could probably teach them something as well as get them paid on the deal that they've found. So make sure you guys write down that email address. It's info at politeproperties.com. And then uh, again, we'll, we'll put the Polite's course. If you're looking for mentorship, we would highly, highly recommend checking out the Polite's course. And I think there's even a discount code uh, that we're going to send you there. And I'm turning to Dedrick and Crystal for some closing advice that we should all write down and take with us uh, to close out the night. What comes to mind uh, for, for something that you'd want everybody to walk away with? Yeah, my, my advice would just be, don't give up. Don't give up. Even if you, know, you feel like quitting, um, you're getting rejected, you know, you're getting hung up on, people slamming the door in your face, the same thing happened to us. You got cursed, cursed out on the phone by a seller. Um, again, it, it doesn't matter how many no's you get. You got to keep going until you get that yes. So don't give up because your success may be right around the corner. Just keep pushing until you until you get that win. Awesome. Um, what I would definitely say is one, let me just respond to Constance. Uh, absolutely. We definitely buy land in Boston. Um, 
besides that, I would definitely say um, one of the things that like got to me when we first started is listening to too many people, right? Um, and listening to a million people say, hey, try this and try this marketing method, try this marketing method. And um, here I have the secrets to your success. And then you start to compare your journey with someone else's journey, right? And you're like, oh my God, he did this and he did that. One of the things we did is we didn't do that. Like we literally um, focused and kept our head down right? We didn't close one deal and come out with a course like so many people are doing now. We literally um, kept our head down. We found what was working for us and we dove into that. And literally like we were, when the videos on YouTube was just for a deal machine was just Dave, like looking at these little short videos that they were putting out. Um, that was us educating ourselves on the one marketing method that we use the most um, that I wanted to know everything about to scale. So don't compare your journey to anyone else's. Run your own race. Yeah. Do not pick up five different marketing methods at one time in the beginning because someone else is saying, hey, listen, this is working for me. You should try this. The only one that I would say really to me goes hand in hand is um uh, postcards and cold calling driving for dollars and cold so calling. so driving for dollars cold calling those to me go hand in hand um when it comes to this business because cold calling if you can't get them make sure your postcards are steady going out um but run your own race don't try and compete with anyone else don't care what anyone else is doing do what works for you guys it's really good advice and helps you stay focused, which is the most important. Absolutely. Thing. It's okay. very distracting to compare yourself to others and to worry about what they're all doing. So I love that advice of don't quit and drive for dollars, do cold calling, send postcards and focus on your own journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining us. And uh, what, are your, what do your two kids do when you do an hour long webinar on a Thursday night? <laughs> they're downstairs um either playing with uh some cars they're a little too quiet so we got to go make sure they're right. not getting <laughs> yeah, into sure they're there, not getting anything bad but my fire alarm ain't went off so <laughs> your fire good. alarm did go off it no, did so they're yet. good <laughs> well thank you guys so much everybody give a lot of love to dedrick and crystal uh, this is going to conclude the Q&A session, and I'm glad we got uh, so many good questions and answers in there. And again, we've left you guys with their contact info with their course. So if you didn't get your question answered, you have the resources to get the answer. You just have to go and get it. Um, you're getting a lot of love in the chat right now. A lot well, of we appreciate it. Deal Machine is, is family to us, so we appreciate Absolutely. our Deal Machine family. Make sure you guys follow us on all social media platforms on anything across the board. It's called Be Polite if you're not following us. If you have any questions, um, always feel free to reach out. We definitely know what it's like starting out um, and just needing that one question answered that can really take you to the next level. So, you know, if you reach out to us, um, we really try to answer questions. Please don't write a book because both of us don't have that type of attention span when we have 50 things going on. But if you have any question, send it to us and we'll definitely try and help you. We're not those people who um, look at you and be like, oh, listen, figure it out, you know, because um, we, we've been there where we just needed one one little thing that's it one little question answered mm -hmm. um and our shit will go unread <laughs> you'll hit them up and then never see your question read on instagram or something so if we can help you guys in any way um please let us know dave is definitely like family like i mean when we were out there doing conferences i would call dave and be like hey listen we're gonna be in st louis hey listen we're gonna be in florida come down um so because we're going to shout you guys out we're talking about deal machine come down remember that dave <laughs> i totally remember that and i was just thinking uh one day it would be really cool to have a deal machine user conference if uh if we had something like that would you guys be uh open to coming to indianapolis to of course you know oh, yeah. we're there for you guys Definitely. anything 
Oh, that would be amazing. And I, we think of you guys as family too. So thanks so much for saying that and helping the greater deal machine family as well here with us tonight. And oh, anything you guys need, you know that. Thank you so much. You're We're going to transition into uh, like a demo. So of course, you're welcome to join us. We also totally get if you've got to spend time with your kids and see what's going on. Um, I'm going to get a drink of water. Elise, would you mind giving us like a little bit of a transition into the demo for a few minutes? Yes, right, guys. absolutely. Thank Thanks. you. Bye, Bye, you guys. Crystal. See ya. All right. I'm going to, I'll pull up my, my account here. Um, actually, this is great because um, I had people asking about how to figure out how many properties to add into Deal Machine to get a deal. So I want to go over that really quick. Okay. Um, I just made you the co-host. So I think you can share your screen now. Okay. Awesome. Alvin, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel too. Uh, all right. We actually just had a video drop today um, that shows how to optimize uh, Street Engine with Message Engine. And we're doing this series called Two is Better Than One. So um, thank you, Alvin. Appreciate the love. Can you see my screen okay, Han? Okay, awesome. Uh, so guys, this is, and this is actually great because this is my beginner account. Um, so this is like if you just signed up for Deal Machine. Oh no, Stacy's having trouble exporting your leads. Stacy, reach out to support, um, but I'll go through how to do that. Uh, yes, Mark, recording will be dropped tomorrow on our YouTube channel. Destiny, what was your question, dear? Um, so just so you guys know, this is where when you start out, huge, huge part of getting um, set up for success with us, it is set your goals. I know this may seem silly, but it's really important um, because you want to be able to set up what your goals are, what is your why, any person that um, or mentor you talk to is going to talk about goals are really important and setting those. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to earn 45,000 in six months to support my family and build wealth. Um, and then this is where I'm going to um, go ahead and text the link to myself if I don't have the app, but I already have it. So then I'm going to add properties, um, building a list, contact leads, find a mentor. So you can do um, some of these things. We'll also go to the Polites course because we really like the Polites course. It's a great course to be a part of. And then you also show like upcoming webinar. I'm going to say I already have a mentor. So once you put in where your default area is, we'll be able to put like how many leads you should be adding. Um, my goal is 100 this month. This is just because that is for my projected goal set that I set for myself. But this is where you're going to find all your um, analytics for total investment, how many properties you've added, um, mailer sent, your profit. And then you'll be able to see how many active leads I have. So I have 11 pending approval. Pending approval means that you haven't um, like started marketing to anything yet. And once those switch to with marketing, it'll go off of um, pending approval. So highly recommend, here's our upcoming webinars. If you guys didn't see that already, we also have great videos if you need a bit of inspiration. Um, they're really great. We have some more dropping here soon. And then the last two things on the dashboard that I wanna mention, mention is this little bell right here. And it's your account activity. You can notice this account's very new to me. This is another one that I have, but I would have like, you know, I added 11 leads, I sent out mail and you can go into each activity point. Then there's the calendar feature, which also now, if you didn't notice, also nests under mailers now. So you can actually see when your mail is going out, you can see the estimated price for your mailer cost. So that way you can better stay on top of your budget and what you're going to be spending for that month in marketing. David, do you, would you like to go over, do you want to take over the screen or you want me to keep going? Oh, I like your screen. <laughs> okay. Um, but I can uh, give your voice a rest if you want. Uh, I'll do map and then you can do leads. All right, perfect. All right. Um, 
So this is your map. You have this on your app as well. This, somebody asked this earlier. Some, this will not show on, um, this will not show on the mobile right. on the side like this. Somebody was asking that earlier. This is just for desktop. Now, let me see. I'm going to do the David thing. He always makes it. So this is like, yeah, make it really narrow and then refresh it. Okay. All the I'm gonna way. Make it, I'm going to even more. Yeah, it's not narrow enough. Make it narrow. Yeah, do it all the way. Is narrow. Yeah, do it all the way. Just yep. get real narrow. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, David, you're going to have to do it. This is one of my new accounts. I don't have driving for dollars on it. Okay. No problem. Sorry, guys. I totally forgot. All right. So this is what it looks like on your phone. And what you're going to see is the map. You can tap on properties to find information about them. You can press add lead, which is going to add that house to your leads list. And then you can also click this button to add a photo of the house, which we discussed earlier, or you can get it from street pick, which is like the Google image. Uh, version of that. Um, and you can click on more info to view that property. And um, so the address is here, your status. Um, so you can manage like, oh, did they um, accept my offer? Uh, if they did, you can update your status accordingly. And then we've got some info about the owner. So we've got two mailing addresses. We're sending mail to this one, which is the property as well. <clears throat> We've got four phone numbers. One of them is mobile. And uh, that is the one that I would probably send a message to. Uh, and I can do that here from the app as well. And then I have uh, email addresses as well. So the system is designed when you do a skip trace to give you all the info that is possibly available so that it might be useful for research purposes. And then it also tells you, hey, this email is not deliverable anymore, but maybe it's the key to tracking them down. You know, if you Google search this email or something, mm -hmm. this email is confirmed to be deliverable. So if you're gonna send a message, you know, do it for this one. Same thing with this phone number, right? This may have been an old phone number of theirs. It's no longer connected, but it's still gonna provide it to you. So that way, if all these other three phone numbers fail to get you in touch with them, Maybe by Googling this one, that could give you the, the key to who this person is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one thing I'm also noticing is each phone number has a caller ID. So that means we did the skip trace. It, we did it on Deal Machine. Uh, somebody just asked. And these are four phone numbers somehow connected to this person. Well, we did a scan to the phone company and verified the caller ID of this number. It's John Izzo, which I see matches the owner occupied house. This is probably the right phone number. So you, this will give you some more clues before you decide which number to go ahead and call. And then uh, this one says Iozo Elizabeth. So that's also probably their phone number because that's uh, not Diana, but it's got the same last name. You kind of see, you guys follow what I'm saying. So there's, there's a lot of details in our skip trace that you won't find elsewhere that's going to help you be a detective and get in touch with that person. Yeah, I, I would love to hear from some OG members of what they think about this, because this is insane in the membrane. This is amazing. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit further, you can send a mailer straight from this view as well. So this, uh, so Samuel, if they're on the do not call list, there would be a tag that would show there too, if we were able to pull that information in. Um, I'm not an attorney, but the do not call list really doesn't apply to real estate investors in most cases, because you're not selling something. Certainly consult your own attorney, but um, wanted to offer that perspective as well. Um, and you can send this postcard straight from the app to uh, the property owner. And uh, this gives you a little preview of what that would look like more general property information. Um, you've got some tags, which if you hire drivers or if you wanna know what to look for, you could use these tags and make sure you're clicking these for the appropriate uh, issue 
that you're noticing about that house when you're adding it driving for dollars. Uh, yeah, you get this is this is all um, available so far with the basic price. The skip trace is an additional cost, 12 cents or 14 cents, depending on what plan you're on. Um, but it, it is available to you uh, as well as these tags. Um, so if you were to hire somebody and let them know what to look for, tell them to look for the tags. Make sure if they're adding a house, they can tag it with something like tall grass or stuffed mailbox or a handicap ramp. Yeah, it takes, I mean, the mail stream is typically taking a, like several days to get to the owner. So, you know, four or five days. Um, we do have an add-on called mail tracking, which would actually show you when the postcard is supposed to arrive and then also when it was scanned at the post office as delivered. So that is an option for you guys if you're interested in the mail tracking. Um, one, one thing that is an additional product that we integrate with Driving for Dollars is uh, for SMS. We call it Message Engine. Um, and I wanted to show you in a one-off fashion, you know, if I had a Message Engine subscription, I could go ahead and just message this person right here uh, from my deal machine app and it's going to send out from my deal machine phone number um, and here's the message are you the person to talk to about xyz property my name is david from leco properties any chance you might think about selling it okay so if they reply then i can keep going and messaging them um, so that's how it works this is actually my neighbors too so i just realized i i just texted my neighbor yeah. Uh, they, act, they own Iozo's Italian restaurant, uh, oh. downtown. Yeah. So, um, there's that. We'll just have to shoot him a text later and be like, Hey, yeah, yeah exactly. All right. So did I cover everything to your satisfaction on the map page? There's just one other thing I think, um, is the route planner and highlights that um, I think are really important for the map. Okay, so you may be interested in knowing which properties are pre-foreclosures, for example. So that's a quick list. You could apply that preset and then you could zoom out to see which properties are pre-foreclosure. I'm looking for one. I'll let you know when I see one. Let's see here. And of course the green lines represent where me or my drivers have already driven. The red lines represent uh, old routes, meaning we have not driven that street in a while. Um, and so red means 12 to 24 months old, by the way, in case you were wondering. Looks like I may not have any pre-foreclosures uh, in my neighborhood right now, especially because they kind of stopped the pre-foreclosing process during COVID. So let's select a different one. Let's select absentee owners and you can see those properties are now outlined and highlighted. So the property highlights can give you information, whatever information it is you're looking for. If you don't like these quick lists, you can actually uh, get more granular with custom filters. So you could highlight any properties that have a sale price from 100,000 to 300,000, for example. So you could filter by whatever you want. All right, you guys, do you guys wanna know how to get GPS directions uh, to all of like the vacant properties or all of the XYZ, you name it, properties in your area. Let me know in the chat if you guys are interested in seeing how to get those turn by turn directions. Anthony, um, for Route Planner, if you're if it's having you go in circles, I'd, I'd reach out to support just so that we can take care of that. Oh, we got a lot of yeses, David. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. All right, so we covered the highlights. And uh, let me show you guys, uh, if you go to the start driving button right here, uh, you're gonna see free drive mode. If you're on the mobile app, there's gonna be a, another button here that is um, called planned route mode. And I don't have the ability to do that on a desktop because it knows my desktop computer <laughs> cannot follow GPS directions. It's only on the mobile app. Um, should I, is there like a screenshot or a video I should pull up? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was about to say there's yours on um, our channel. He wasn't teasing you guys. He has done this. It's a great video. Do 
Do you it see is. it? Yep, it's arrived right next to the webinar replay in between. Yep. All, All right. right. So here I am. Um, you guys can see it on the right. It's giving me turn by turn directions to all of the vacant homes in my exact zip code. So I'm basically seeing which of my neighbor's homes are vacant. And it was really fascinating because there was like a duplex that I hadn't seen before until I found it on this route. Um, and you can see it was veering me off to the right, which is actually the driveway of this house that is highlighted in uh, green. That's where it was taking me on the right here. Um, so that big old house is vacant right there. Holy crap. Yeah. And then let's zoom forward a little bit. Uh, there was like two houses that were for sale. So that made sense why they were vacant. Uh, Cause they were literally for sale and, and they were totally empty. I'm looking wrong side here. Oh yeah. This was good though, because it also just like, you were like, oh, it was the other side of the street. So yeah, I was confused, but it turned out uh, I'm about to discover where it is right now. And David knew this because he saw there oh, was yeah, a... that was the one it, it yep. was vacant um, with the for sale sign. Cool. So yeah, the way to get it, guys, is if you are on your mobile app, you click start driving. There's that planned route mode. It's part of the professional plan. If you guys have that, it's active. You can use it if you're on the basic plan. You would have to get the professional plan to use it, but I wanted you guys to know it's there if that was important for you. Um, and yeah, if you're saying, is there a way to avoid commercial properties? Absolutely. So when you're telling the route planner what you want to see, you can select uh, you can select single unit properties, right? One unit count equals one. Here's the filter. Units count. Uh, and you would do maximum one unit. Great. Thanks so much for uh, mentioning that, Elise. Anything else on the map before we go on? Those are like the main points. Again, if you're using Street Engine, highly recommend signing up for one of our live trainings because we go even more in depth on those and you'll love um, Dan, our trainer. He's great. And you'll be able to really get that one-on-one -on -one experience because you get to actually talk with Dan. So um, highly recommend. Hannah's putting those down there for you. Um, all right, leads list. Leads this list. Yeah, it's really powerful. So anything you've added from the map, they would show up on this leads list. And then you can continue to filter this list in the same way we did the highlight properties. So if I wanted to see all of my properties that were added by my driver, Martin. Which by the way, we're doing a video with Martin and Nate, both of David's drivers about what they think of route planner. Oops. That's fantastic. Um, how much is the plan with the street? If that's the deal machine professional plan, street engine professional comes with the route planner. Um, I like to make my pictures big so I can see what Martin is submitting. Okay. Uh, so these are all added by Martin White, uh, as you can see right here. And it looks like he's adding some good stuff. Let's see, I can pop open this lead, make sure his picture looked clear. He said there was some biological growth on this thing. And so what I'm trying to do is spot check some of these pictures, make sure what he's adding is exactly the criteria that I have. So, I mean, it looks pretty shabby. I can't totally uh -huh. tell bio growth, but it does look a little bit run down. That's what I'm noticing. So David, can you point out what you look for? I mean, I know you said the quality of the photo, but what else um, do you look for with their photos? Yeah, I want his photos to be clear and straight. I don't want to see the car rear view mirror, the side mirror in the photo. I'm using these photos on my mail. So I want the photos to look professional. I want them to look straight and clear. This one, I do see biological growth right, right here. You know, that right there is looking pretty nasty not looking good and that railing looks like it's seen some better days right the railing is a little bit messed up so these are some things that i like 
that he's adding for me. So I appreciate that very much from him. And you guys will actually get to meet him. I'm just so excited about that. You'll get to, those of you who are here know who Martin is now and you'll be able to know who he is in the video. So um, let, let's, uh, if you're just a lot, we have a lot of new people on here. Just so you know, if you do have a list already, you can import those leads here so that you have everything in one place. And you do that with the import um, list button at the top right. And so um, just so you guys are aware, you guys can then organize them in here. We have, as you can see, David has like lead statuses, lists, you have tags, um, and the filtering is uh, used here as well. If you wanna filter through, I mean, oodles of things that you can go through. Right. Okay, so here's what, here's some other things you might wanna do here. If you want to start mailers, for all of your leads, you click this little box up here. You've selected 25 because it shows 25 per page. You could also change that to 100. Um, and then what you do is you press the start mailers button. You press the skip trace send message button. Let me get it back up here. Whoopsie. All right, computer is having a little problem. Actually, George, I have a, we can definitely show you how to edit a postcard and assign it to multiple leads. I have a question for everyone on here. Um, I've been thinking about doing a video of how to do certain processes like this, like sitting down and everything. Would that be of interest to you guys? I would just love to hear that. All right, sweet biscuit. I will get on that. Erica is pumped and I like it. I will be filming those tomorrow for y'all. All right, what else should we show? Um, so just David is showing like one of the best things ever and this actually um, to, to assign different mailers to things this we can actually show that now kind of backwards from creating to but what david did is he selected all of them you would filter through the criteria of the postcard you wanted to send and then you would go to more and you would go to um i believe it's marketing can you click on that i forget what it is mailing options and then you would select the template or campaign you wanted to start for this select number of um uh, houses. Sorry, I was trying to read the chat at the same time. I know I do the same thing. It's, <laughs> that's not easy to do for sure. No, it's not. Um, so then you can just go ahead and start mailers. So I'll actually um, definitely make a video for you guys of I, I have a video on bulk editing, but I'll literally make it to where I like sit down and and run it through like it was you doing it. Um, but I mean, look at all those. There's the top. There's the blocks template. I did pull that out earlier. This is real life. It is real. Here's my blocks template returned mailer. Mm -hmm. So this is the street pick as well, which actually it's a pretty good street pick. I was very okay with the street pick. And here's some repeat mail options that you guys have. You can turn on repeating mail. You say repeat every 21 days or however many days you want. Repeat forever. Yes or no. Repeat, you know, three times, whatever you want. Um, so those um, are all available options to you. Yep. And again, up at the top, you can see you can do multiple things in bulk to your list. So just know that that's all available to you. If you start doing something one by one by one by one, I can almost guarantee you don't actually have to do that. Um, so definitely look in our YouTube. You, I try to put anything that we do in bulk or something like that in the title. So it's easy to look up on our channel. Um, but also you have that uh, tab in your deal machine account to look at our tutorial videos. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all for the leads list that's like high level. Okay. Um, I also wanted to draw your attention though, Elise, to the oh. import list option. If you guys have a spreadsheet that you wanna skip trace, 
you can import that in the deal machine and skip trace it or send mail to it. And that would be, you would start that process from just importing your Excel sheet and whatever format it's in, you just get it in the deal machine and then map whatever columns need to be mapped appropriately and get that list in deal machine. You're arriving, street engine, vroom vroom. Yeah, so there's uh, a history of all the routes that you guys drove. Um, and they're right here. You can see a little summary uh, views and how many miles, how many hours, how many leads it was. Um, you can click on any of those to see that uh, over here on the right. I like to get a summary of the miles driven every four weeks uh, or month to date to see how I'm doing this month compared to last month. Looking pretty good over here at Leco Properties. And then, uh, wow, how many miles did I drive this year so far? 8,400 oh. miles. No, that was, I'm pretty sure 84,000. No, 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 8,400. Oh God, I didn't see the point. I about died. I was like 84,000 miles in a year. Yeah, and that's because I have four drivers. So you could recruit drivers by inviting somebody via email. And what I'm, the next thing I'm about to show you is part of the enterprise plan where you can actually set up a recruitment page to recruit drivers. Uh, we have a bunch of videos for you. You can customize what the page says. You can turn on these videos that we've pre-recorded for you to teach them about your payment structure, for example. Are you gonna pay hourly per property per closed deal? Do you want them to find abandoned, occupied, or slightly distressed properties? Um, so a lot of the, the onboarding and training is something that can be done uh, for you if you're scaled up uh, once you've done several deals like the Polites with the enterprise plan. You can even customize the welcome email they get from you as well. Shall we go on to the mailers? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So uh, tell us what signatures are. Yeah, so signatures, if you're thinking like, I need to change my return mailing address or I need to change my phone number, this is where you go, not your account settings. Go into signatures. If you're on basic and professional, you get one signature. As you can see, David on Enterprise gets as many signatures as he wants. You may be like, why would I need that? If you are scaling and you are in different markets, you may want different phone numbers for your different markets, or maybe you have different partners that want to send out different mail. Um, a lot of different, a lot of different scenarios. Um, me personally, I have one signature that's my photo signature, and then also my logo signature. So you can really use signatures in a ton of different ways. Um, but this is again where you're going to put in your like return mailing address your phone number, your email, um, your website, anything you want on your postcard besides the like text on the actual mailer is going to be here. And then we make it really easy. So once you get signatures set up, the next thing you're gonna do is your templates. Um, and these are like the polite said, very customizable and you can test them like um, Crystal said. Uh, there's the blocks. If you were to start a new one, you would just create new, you can clone them. Um, you want to go into one, David? I was about to call you Dave. Um, and you can change all the text. You can change the colors. Um, have fun with it. You're paying money for these. Try to customize them as much as possible. Make them personalized. Kind of feel like you're writing to your neighbor. Um, we found that that works really well. And um, a lot, I know some people were asking. So when um, Crystal was talking about putting a image instead of the house picture right there where it says template image, you can upload an image instead of the house picture to be on there. If you would like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can get a preview of it right here. Well, look at that. That would catch my eye. And then, then campaigns. let's, let's hear about the campaigns. So campaigns is, and someone asked um, about this, campaigns is the, um, a drip that goes for, you know, you can customize which template goes after what template. We do have repeat mail if you don't have campaigns. The difference is, is that if you don't have campaigns, you can repeat it, but it's the same postcard every single time that goes out that you have um, on a sequence. In campaigns, you can customize that, from the template that goes out to when it goes out to how many times it repeats. 
Um, these are great for like David shows here. He has ones that are for foreclosures, um, even cash buyers. So you find a corporate property, don't be discouraged. Send out a postcard. David taught me this in the beginning, uh, sending it out to the corporate owners and saying, hey, you know, are you looking to buy more properties like this? I'm a local investor. Would you know, call, let me know if you want me to call you. I forget your exact wording. I really butchered that, but it's a really great idea to help build another way to build your buyers list. Uh, okay. Thanks so much for explaining the campaigns. Let me pop into one real quick and show you. Step one, I could send the buyer postcard. Um, I could add a second step. Uh, here we go. Add another step. Step two could be a handwritten font letter that sends every 21 days for three times. And then I could add a third step that says a Spanish postcard in case they're bilingual. So uh, <laughs> this would be an odd campaign to build, but I just wanted to show you what your options are with this uh, campaigns feature. Erica, so happy we're showing you how to optimize. I'm glad that, I know there's so much, so glad that we can help with that. Um, okay, and then the calendar, we talked about, we showed this on the dashboard, but again, we have it here for you guys as well. So you don't always have to go to the dashboard to look to see the status of your mail and where it's at and you know your mail costs. Totally. Yeah, so you've got the calendar here. Um, so you can see what mail is coming up next and I can see my next postcard is headed out to Monica Castello. That was a uh, queued that's currently sending. Um, and on Friday, it looks like I have uh, two postcards to Monica Castello going out. Is that, am I interpreting that correctly? Yeah, two scheduled mailers. Mm -hmm. There you go. Erica, yes, you can unfilter by corporate owned properties. And Karen, a lot of this is on the professional and enterprise, but basic does have a lot of the same things as well. Uh, all right. Moving on down to list engine. All right, here she is. Here she is. That's right. So uh, let's say instead of driving for dollars, or maybe in addition to driving for dollars, uh, there's this certain zip code that is so hot, right? I don't need some driving for dollars person to tell me which houses I would want all of them. They're all run down, right? They're all run down. You don't need a driver to add each one individually. You could actually just select the entire neighborhood. So um, let's do that. Or, or I'm also going to say, if you know it's a hot zip code, but you want to find extra pain points to see if there are distressed ones, you can put this, pull this, go to Street Engine and plan a route around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I'm going to blanket everything in Meridian Kessler, if I want to just blanket the Meridian Kessler neighborhood with uh, houses that are vacant, I can select them all. And then I can pull that list and I can see there's 78 leads here. So I could submit this list. Now these leads are being pulled into my CRM. It is building the list of 78 leads right now. So this is, uh, this is part of uh, deal machine. It's called the list engine. Uh, so it's, it's continuing to build that list. So we got 14 leads here so far. Um, and they're all going in this pending approval. So once that's done, it means I can go in and I can approve them to have mail sent out. Um, but it just takes a second for this list to build. Yep. And then you have a wonderful thing called smart lists. And if you toggle that bad boy on, that makes it to where when we update this weekly, anything that does not match your criteria for this list will be taken out. Or if it, there's new stuff that matches the criteria, it will be put into this list, saving you time and headaches. All right. So Shonda, I showed you a little, I, sorry. No, Shonda asked if we could run comps and deal machine. I was gonna do like a winky night yet, winky face. Oh yeah, it's, it's something that's coming soon. Uh, so in the next couple of weeks, uh, you should definitely see the comping feature come out. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. 
Um, this is our messages, our SMS messages tool called Message Engine. And you can see the conversations that I've started. So here's one that I sent out to Brian Campbell. And he says, nope, I'm good. Uh, Him. These are, this is how you can see all of the SMS messages that have been started um, as uh, conversations. David, will the comps feature be able to be used on basic? The, uh, I actually don't know, I don't know what, uh, I think we know that everyone needs comps. Um, I, I don't know if it's a $20 um, add-on uh, or what, I'll have to double check before speaking about that, I'm not sure. All right, look at all of these. I like all the different messages you have and you get nine conversation starters already from us. So that way you don't get marked as spam. This is a great training to join if you're interested in SMS. Another great tra trainer, Dakota. Mm -hmm. Look at yeah, that. So um, I could select 25 uh, properties. I could send a message. It is gathering all of my leads right now. Um, and I've got all these conversation starters uh, ready to go. So let me start sending them. No, the drivers don't see any messages that you're sending to their leads. But here's how I could send 16 messages right off the bat is you just click this um, and it's it's sending a different message to each person um, and it's actually sending it from um, one of my uh, phone numbers that I have associated with my account. So when those responses come back, I'll know on the app or right here on the web um, and then I can continue the conversation from there. This does also, um, go, if they try to call that number, it does go to whatever phone number you put to, uh, what word am I looking at for? Connect? I don't remember what I was trying to say. Me neither. No idea. <laughs> yeah, so with the, uh, with the SMS message engine feature, if you guys have questions about it, definitely join that training that Hannah just posted. Um, you automatically are forced to activate 30 numbers if you're going to use this tool because it's it's going to rotate your outgoing messages across those numbers so that way you don't exceed the rate limit of a seven digit 10 digit phone number right so you, you're rotating the volume so that way none of those numbers do get marked as spam the vas can have access to the feature absolutely you can give any team member access to the sms feature um, the best way for you guys to learn more and get started is to attend that training that Hannah posted uh, right above you. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I could show you, like, so you could see these, this is my bank of 30 numbers here. I've got a lot of numbers uh, activated that are being rotated through when I'm sending those messages. Uh, I have, there's a lot of saved replies that come with the product as well. And I have some conversation settings, uh, the opt-out language, and then automatically skip trace leads that are added. Uh, Kiana, you get 30 numbers when you purchase the product. Um, so if you want to learn more about it, uh, attend that training called training message. Um, post that link again for you with a little description. Uh, sorry, I don't know what happened to my copy paste there. There you go. Um, um, also to Diane, you can have, you can add team members to this. Super exciting, I love it. Look at all those messages. Yeah, so here, here's how you would add a, a team member, invite by email. And then once they are invited, you can give them access to your message engine. Uh, so full access or remove access. Um, that is how you would give one of your VAs access to the SMS feature. Get free leads. Um, this part of your app just gives you your own promo code. So you can share that with others and you both get uh, credit for sharing it. The 
settings has quite a few settings. The, the profile is just like your name, your email, basic account stuff, engines and add-ons. It shows you all the stuff that you can purchase. Uh, the comps feature is coming soon, like I mentioned earlier. The uh, default mailing options determines what happens with the lead when you add it to your account. Do you want to approve it or do you want it to automatically be assigned to a certain mail template? Mm -hmm. That's what the default mailing options are. Property tags. My team wanted to um, highlight biological growth. So we made a special tag called bio growth that they can tag when they see a property with mold or some type of growth on the side. Badges just kind of reward you and encourage you as you go along adding your first, second, third property, drive those first 50 miles, 100 miles. Um, so that is fun and motivating. Um, promo code, if you have one, stop all sending. It just uh, prevents all mailers from going out. Automatically send mailers would automatically send mail if you add a property. Dark mode is what we've been using Deal Machine as. Boy, that's bright. If you go back to that, you're not ready for it. Uh, street pick will automatically add a photo to properties um, that don't have an image. Badge notifications will just give you those uh, pop-ups when you earn a badge. And then this is pretty popular, open uh, page on app start. So it's default by the dashboard, but if you drive for dollars a lot, change this to the map. That way, every time you open your app, the, the map shows up and you can just tag that property really quickly. Here's a, another spot to import your list. Um, and then you can view like your invoices uh, right here if you ever wanted to check those out. Um, Jason asked if, notice that some of his leads are saying owner not found, why is that showing up? That is because we, the county does not, or like the longitude latitude might be off or, right? Um, you know, Jason, if you, if you have a lead that says owner not found, why don't you send that to our team and, and we'll dig into it. I don't see that very often actually. Um, and yeah, that'd be, that'd be something I'd be curious to check into for you. Right. There's a request feature here as well, uh, button. So if you want a feature that we don't have, you could search for it here. And if it's not already on our list, you could, you could vote for it or you could submit it as a new feature. And then help, you can hit up our chat team and you could send them a funny GIF. And they can uh, help you out with any questions that you have. They, they respond very quickly. And uh, we also have an instructional videos button uh, where you can see and learn more about different areas of deal machine or marketing that we didn't already cover. Woo -woo. That's right. So what did I miss? Man, I think you covered everything. Okay. Um, guys, just really um, suggest going to those trainings to get everything you need. Um, and they're free. They're live. Um, David has uh, hired some great trainers and to, to educate our members and to continue um, giving you guys guidance to get those deals because that's what we want. Because then you get to do a success call and be on the YouTube channel. What's a success call? So great question, David. Our success calls are for if you closed any deals or um, a deal with Deal Machine, you get to have a success call with me um, and we record it and uh, you get a really cool thumbnail on YouTube and we get to, it's a great way to actually connect with other members and you get some Deal Machine swag um, that you can wear around with pride and we just want to celebrate with you guys all your wins and oh, here's a success call you did uh one recently yes West. That. yeah that was that was a good one he is actually in the uh, cali market 
So um, when people say, when you have people who are a little discouraging saying your market's too saturated, we have a ton of people in our success calls that show you that it is still possible. Right, it is definitely possible for sure. All right, I think we covered everything for tonight. I think so. Thank you guys so much for coming on here. Oh, what's the success rate with virtual dragon for dollars with deal machine? We do not have hardcore numbers on that. If I, yeah, here we go. If you guys commit to doing the required amount of work, you're going to be successful. Yeah. If you're consistent with what you're doing and you do it long enough, you're going to be successful. Therefore, you should understand what those expectations are. So for driving for dollars, like in a Midwest market, we always say find 300 rundown properties, send mail three times over three months to all of them. And that is about what it takes to get a deal. Now you have to have the ability to actually close the deal. But what we're saying is from looking at all of our members, that is about when you'd uh, be able to pop a deal off, right? So that's three months investment um, into the marketing, the subscription, and taking those calls and going on those appointments. If you're in a higher price market, it's, it's higher. It's maybe like, like 600 or 1,000 on the highest of high price markets. So you guys um, just need to connect with the Polites, jump on one of our live trainings, um, get the information so you have the right expectations for your market, your strategy, and commit to doing that and you will be successful. And we have videos of people who talk about, just so if people are interested in virtual driving for dollars, just like David said, we may not have like hard data on it, but I've had multiple people tell me they close multiple deals just virtually driving for dollars, but the volume you may have to double with it. So like David said, you just gotta work and hit those goals to close deals. Oh, Donald, thank you. We love you too. We love our family. Very thankful for every single one of you. Hopefully we'll be able to do meetups again and see you guys at conferences and get some selfies. Oh, there's David, virtually driving for dollars. This is one of my favorite things. No excuses. If you come home and you only have five properties and you're like, oh, it's too dark. Nah, you got this. Keeney, thank you. You're amazing. Just added a few properties myself. Boom, David's done. He's already doing it right now. I could even skip trace them right here. This was my favorite thing to do while watching football. <laughs> numbers. Uh, yes, Greg, it's all done through Google Maps. Yep, and there's a Chrome extension that David, uh, it's just literally dealmachine.com slash Chrome. Mm -hmm. I know Erica, we can't either. Just signed up for SMS, but I'm not used it more than once in my neighbor's vacant house. Adrian, we gotta get you clicking on the SMS. I wanna hear how it goes. All right. All right, guys. Happy deal finding. Join us on our trainings. We want to see you. Yeah, we want to see you. And don't forget, we do these webinars every other week. And I do lives every Wednesday on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook group. So don't forget to say hi. And we'll definitely say hi back. But like David said, happy deal finding. Also, Adrian, congratulations on signing up for SMS. And I'm glad you messaged your neighbor. I'm so glad to have you on that. But make sure to use it because that's how you're going to get that deal. Max out the 6,000 conversations as soon as you can. Uh, and with that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Have a good Bye. Time. See ya.